Good morning, we are back. Good morning, good morning, we are back. Virtual live. And I just want to make sure that you are here to get the word this morning. I want to make sure that you are here to hear what the Spirit of the Lord will be saying uh, to the church. And because of that, we are experiencing, we have a special guest that will be coming on today with us. And we know that it is a word from the Lord. We will be coming on live with our special guest this morning. And we will be making sure that God is speaking to his people as never before. That God is doing some great and marvelous things because he is God. And besides him, there is no other God. And we stand in belief that if God be for you, who can be against you? So this morning, we will have a word of the Lord from Pastor Prathen L. Power, Senior of World Changes Tabernacle. We'll bring him on, and today's message will be profound. It'll be a word that was going to encourage you, not only today, but in days to come, because God is our God. There is no other God. We can depend on God. We can rely on God. We can trust God. In the word of God, say, lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge him and God shall direct our path. That's Proverbs, the third chapter. And I believe because God is for us in this season, in this hour, who can be against us? And I just stand in agreement that we as believers, we come and we come together virtually. We come together in our cyber world. Come on. And as you come on, come with an expectation that God's going to show up. God's going to show out and God's going to give us a word that's going to help us to be the better, to help us be uh, encouraged, help us to be stronger in the Lord. So as we come on today, we want you to know that God is a great God. He is an awesome God and God is worthy to be praised. There is no God, our God. As our guests make his way on today, good morning, everybody. We are from Abundant Life, Full Gospel Outreach Church, better known as ABL. We're coming today in a different way. Amen. We're sharing our screen today with Prophet Prathen L. Powers, Senior of World Changes Tabernacle, who have a word from the Lord for us today. But before we come on with Pastor Powell, I want you to do something for me. I want you to like and share. This word is so awesome. This word is so life-changing. This word is so encouraging. I want you to remember to come on, like us and share us. Uh, I guess have joined us. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray, then we'll have a word of the Lord from uh, Prophet Power, World Changes Tabernacle. I'm just loving this virtual church. I'm loving what God can do in this season. Let us pray. And after that, we're going to allow uh, Prophet Power to just flow as God has given him a word for us, a word of encouragement. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We bless you. <clears throat> we honor you. It is you, God, that gets the glory. We come before you with expectation. We come before you knowing that you have already heard us and answered our prayers. We give you praise this morning. We thank you for the spirit of God. We give you our worship this morning and we lift you up as a people of God, as believers in Jesus name, I pray, amen. Amen. If you're just tuning in, you're just joining us, uh, Prophet Powell have a word for us this morning. And I want you to really take notes and hone in what the Lord is saying to us this morning through my friend, my covenant brother, uh, Prophet Powell. You may go ahead, Prophet. Amen. Well, God bless you, Dr. Ali, and the mother life. Thank you all for allowing us to come and being a part of your virtual church. You know, we're in a time where we never thought this day would come. You know, technology was way back in the IBM time. When uh, even with Bill Gates first launched out the the DOS computer and stuff like that, and 
Uh, then the church started having its way with television ministry. We had the real huge, large cameras back then. So we got cameras this small now that does just, it's not better quality work. So to be with you all this morning is a thank. I'm very appreciative for having two services today, you all, and then I have my 11 o'clock service at the Tabernacle in Columbus, Georgia. But uh, Pastor Ali, you are a wonderful, uh, wonderful friend. Love you so much. Thank you for trusting me to come part of your virtual trip. Now, now, listen, ABL, let's do this. Now, you all know it takes finances to operate a ministry. Uh, we have been blessed, uh, not saying fortunate, we've been blessed to have actually cleared our debt of our church mortgage about a month ago. Uh, we had a balance of about thirty some thousand dollars and we were able to uh, write a check uh, to the bank and clear that debt. And we have a free mortgage building operation ministry. In fact, the whole entire ministry is debt free. It's now giving us the opportunity to do even more in our community. So can we do that with abundant life? Yes. It takes people like yourself that be leaving a man, leaving a woman of God. Uh, she stood the test of time and uh, and she wants you to be a part of it. So go ahead and do your online giving as you would normally do. Uh, if you haven't been giving online, you no, know, try the method. It'll, it'll save you a lot of headache. Try to remember have you paid your tithes and offering. You know, the book of Malachi encourages to bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Here's what says the Lord holds. The word Lord holds means that God are more than enough. But he would not pull you out blessings that you had not room to contain Amen. them. That's another translation. <clears throat> Excuse the trousers of my throat. <clears throat> these days, you cough too much, people think you got COVID. It's just, I got these, uh, I call morning allergies waking me up. But uh, thank you again. So let, let's do this. You, you're doing your offering, you're giving. If you're not giving online, please make sure you bring those gifts by the church. Make a, a contact with your woman of God or those in charge of the finances and keep pushing the vision of giving. Not only with abundant life, and those are watching uh, just as family and friends. I want to encourage you, world change, do likewise. Do support your local ministry because it's important that we continue to do what we're doing. So today, I want to share with you uh, the devil's end time tactics to sidetrack believers. Now, I'm one of those type of pastors. I'm a thorough teacher. Now, I'm not going to bore you long. I'm not going to keep you too long. I've been given the expression by the woman of God to kind of keep between 35 to 40 minutes, which is going to be the uh, time to do that. So it's 10.05 now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've already given out our accolades to the woman of God and, and to the abundant life ministry uh, to you all for being uh, on board and staying connected, staying connected mm -hmm. to your faith, staying connected Amen. to the promise of God. He, a lot of people talk about promises, but they don't realize promises not to get in the stuff, the car, the house, a husband, a wife, the, tech, the promise of God is think of eternity with him one day. So the devil has always had tactics to attack believers, uh, better yet, against any religious organization that stood for the things of God. Now, the reason I say religious, religious is because uh, I'm a ordained Baptist minister, but I pastor a non-denominational church, but I'm of the Christian faith. So we don't get stuck with denomination, but understand the, the Christian faith is what we used to believe. Though they're Muslim, they have, they're the Muslim faith. Uh, I'm not one that believe in knocking a person because they're Muslim, you know, I mean, all I know is Jesus died for me, and what he did for me is all that matters. But I, one thing I do know, that no matter what faith or belief you're a part of, the devil always got his tactics trying to, to annihilate us at some point. But my focus today is for believers, of uh, Christians. If you're not a Christian faith, uh, this message is not for you. If you're a Christian faith, this message is for you. If you're not a Christian faith, it's still for you, but you got to be willing to uh, listen to what God has to say. So we're talking about the devil's end time tactics to sidetrack believers. We as believers, though that confess Christ as our Lord and Savior, according to Romans uh, chapter 10, uh, the confession of the mouth, believing the heart, you shall be saved. And John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should what? Not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Think about that, everlasting life. Not just life here on the earth, but the life afterwards. You know, sometimes, you know, we hear people post on Facebook when someone transitioned, they'll say, uh, rest in peace, R.I.P. Uh, you know, unfortunate, everybody's a rest in peace. But if you set the cross of your life and you're walking this faith walk, then you will rest in peace until the Lord called the church back home, or called the church, what we call the rapture, to, me, to be taken away. The Bible says the dead of Christ shall rise first, and those that remain alive shall also be caught up. <clears throat> so, that's eternity. That's what John 3 says. For God so loved the world. He didn't just love 
just the believers of the faith. He loved the whole entire creation of humanity. But humanity has to accept him as the Savior. And once you come into this world and you come into this, this realm of salvation, understand the enemy is going to come to sidetrack you. He's going to try to do everything he can to, to, to disengage you from your faith. You know, if, whether it be through offense from somebody in the church, whether it be through a rumor, or whether it be through an a, a unfortunate exposure of, of, of a failure. But nevertheless, we have to understand the devil has one mission, is to distract us from the things of God. In fact, we're related. The Bible tells in Galatians that if a brother be overtaken a fault, ye that are spiritual should restore such a one. In, in the spirit of meekness, considering that self, another one says, unless you also be tempted to fall. So no one's above a, a failure. No one's above being uh, 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 receiving attack from the enemy to distract us. But we as the faith, the believers, should be adamant about encouraging one another in faith. Encouraging one another in spite of the COVID-19. We still got to stay with God. Amen. We still got to get back to our, our normalcy of, of going back to church. And, uh, you know, even though some churches say they have a full house, but your full house like us is 80 people. You know, I can't get more than that in this sanctuary. So if I zoom the, the camera, uh, it, you see a full house. But that's like almost 90 some people in just the sanctuary where we normally could hold 200 some plus people. So we have to limit our services, time, I mean, space for the people. Mm -hmm. But the tactic of the enemy will make you think because the seat is full, that you're full. Tell it, we're not full because we can't get all the people in the building. But those that are following us by virtual, those that are in our other building, uh, the life center, they can follow us by being in that building. But we, we're forced to split. But in, in spite of that, we have to have our own. God given tactics to defeat the enemy. In other words, don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear. You know, your five senses, you know, your, what you hear, what you see, your smell and your taste, all these are the senses of the human body. But there's there are senses of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that we need to be mindful of. Amen. That's discerning. Discerning the time we're living in. Uh being able to recognize a person in the faith is going to a, a downward spiral moment. Uh, recognize somebody is in a, in a good place, you know, because darkness is, is around us. That's a part of the tactics of the enemy. But let, let's look at the word sidetrack and the word tactic. The word sidetrack, it means to cause someone to be distracted from immediate important use or issue. COVID-19 came about in 2019, the end of 2019 going 2020. And 2020 was one of the most treacherous years of my decade, Amen. of my generation, compared to the Spanish flu. I wasn't there. But what we experienced was a, a, a major sidetrack to pull the church away from enormity. Not only did, did the world get affected, but the church was impacted. Mm -hmm. That was a time, if something happened related to the world, the first entity they would call would be the church. The president would call for the pastors of the, of the, of the, of the region to come and pray at the, at the, at the, at the White House and, and, uh, for, for some type of relief or some type of deliverance. But we went through a time that the president even called for the people, the men and women of God, which that was a tactic of the enemy. Not so much him as a, but a tactic of the enemy to sidetrack us to be so busy, so consumed about a virus that we can't understand that yeah. the very importance of prayer was essential. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they, they made certain things essential, like such as being able to deal with some, some, some of the drink, liquor, you know, uh, people that smoke or vapor, they still made that essential, but no one made it essential to stay in prayer. They didn't make it a sense to go back to church. They, they, they literally tried to take us away from that, which was a sidetrack uh, tactic of the devil. And then the word tactic means a plan or action for achieving a goal is a maneuver. In other words, the Bible says, in the coming not but to steal, to kill, and to what? Destroy. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't know about you. I had done everything I possibly could in the midst of this virus, in the midst of this, uh, this pandemic, to not be sidetracked. Amen. Not to be broken in, in, in my spirit, not to feel like giving up. You know, I had my meltdown moments mm -hmm. where, Lord, you know, you got to do something, though. Not because I couldn't come to the building of the church, but I wanted to be with my family and friends. Mm -hmm. And that no time, even the fold was important. I call the family, friends, and fold. Even the fold, you want to see them. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't because of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the enemy is, is doing and has done what he's been assigned to do by his own domain. The Bible says he's the God of this world. His desire it just sifts us as we. But Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, I already prayed mm -hmm. for you. I already interceded for you that you would not be overtaken in these moments. What we have read in the scriptures 
has now come and manifest in our day and time we live. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9 and verse 12, these are the two verses of scripture, and then we're going to go with the conclusion of Galatians. But in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, don't get scared because of Revelation. Most folks in the book of Revelation, they start getting scared. Well, if you live right, you run into fear. You know, only when you're in darkness, you start having these scare tactics. Mm -hmm. But the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, the, the apostle, he puts it so clear. He said, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil mm -hmm. and Satan. Mm -hmm. So when you hear the word devil, dragon, Satan, uh, uh, he has uh, many names, but it all means the same as yeah. darkness. And it said the old serpent, old means historically. Mm -hmm. That means he has time he lived. He didn't just say the serpent. He said old serpent. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, he, he's like father time. I mean, he, he go way back before we got here. He was in the Garden of Eden before Adam Eve got there. Somebody said, well, if God made the garden so perfect, why he let the, the devil be there? Well, you got to ask God that. No theologian can answer that. You know, the Bible said God had the certain things that God has have held back from us because there's things we know in part. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the parts that I don't know. So I'm not going to pretend like I do know because I don't know. All I know, he was there. And even being there, he was operating with a tactic to pull Adam away from his original position of being subject to the Father, subject to God. Yes. And it says, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been told biblically that a third of the heaven hosts, I mean angels, became fallen angels, became demons, but were cast out. Now, only God can do that. Now, Michael, he, he did his, he did his, his, his due service. He cast the devil out. He cast the, the demons out because they went from angels to fallen darkness, and darkness represented the demons. Yeah. The demons can now be called demons versus angels, yeah. the fallen angels. Amen. The devil and his angels cast out into the earth. And the Bible says, and and, and they were cast out with him. So when they cast with him, they also began to operate like him. So the devil is not omnipotent. He's not like God can be everywhere. He, he, had to, he has to move. In fact, the book of Job, when the devil came and presented himself among with the sons of God, uh, the angel, he says, guys, where have y'all come from? Mm -hmm. And the devil said, from two and four in the earth. Two and four, four in the earth. I mean, he, he travels. Mm -hmm. he, he don't just pop up. Mm -hmm. he, he has to travel to get there. He, he's not everywhere. He has to come forward. Only God is everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's in every place. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God holds the good and evil that we do. So God is everywhere. So the devil, according to verse 9, and they were cast out into him, out with him. And verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Because no one he's, he's no longer here. Mm -hmm. He says, He said, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. He's talking about the angels of heaven, some of the, the heavens and the heaven places, heaven and place. And then it ends with a period. Anytime you see a period, at the end of a sentence, that means the conclusion of it. That's mm -hmm. If it had been a comma, it would be a continuation. Right. This verse is, and the great dragon, which is the devil, and the angel, and his uh, fallen uh, demon, uh, was cast out, that old serpent. And then it's in verse 12, it says, therefore rejoice, it's a comma, ye heavens, comma means continuation, and ye that dwell in them, period. But then he gives a warning. In the same verse, at the end of the period, it says, Woe may take caution or notice to the inhabitants, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knew that he had but a short time. Yes. Now think about it. Mm -hmm. He tells us on the earth, the devil has come down, having great wrath. He's got great indication. In the, in the nation toward the, church, the world. He's mad. He's angry. He's bitter. So when you come across people that are bitter, it's because they, they have allowed themselves to be infused by the devil's influence. When people in the church start doing opposite what God says, they have allowed the devil to, to mm -hmm. infuse them to do opposite what God says. That's why the Bible says, you know, therefore let your light so shine before men may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Yes. So the enemy does that. He says that. He said, come have a great wrath because he knows he had but a short time. So he does know this. He has knowledge, his time on earth, of what he's going to do related to uh, destroying mankind, if possible, is short-lived. 
That's why you must understand when you go to a test or trial of life, it's a short lived thing. It may feel like eternity, mm -hmm. but it's short lived. Mm -hmm. Because if you look back over your life, how many things have you and I gone through and we overcame them? Mm -hmm. How many things we were subject to and God delivered us? Mm -hmm. You know, now listen, I'm not going to say that COVID 19 is, is the devil doing, because if it was the devil doing, everybody would have COVID. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we get the devil more, more credit than it's due. It's a disease, it's a virus. It has nothing to do with the devil. But can God bring the judgment of a COVID? Yes, he can. He, he did it with Egypt. He, he even said the plague against Egypt mm -hmm. only affected Egypt, but it didn't affect the, the, the truth of God in Goshen. Now, somebody, is it God doing? Well, I don't know. You have to ask God yourself. He didn't told me that. All I know is a disease, a virus on the earth mm -hmm. that we need to take caution with. Mm -hmm. it's, but it can be used as a tactic to distract us from our faith. Amen. Because if we get to the place that we're more about talking about a virus, then talking about the goodness of God and what God can do is a tactic. Mm -hmm. When the church is on lockdown, some folks scared to go back to the church, but you're not scared to go to the mall. You're not scared to go to the restaurant. Amen. You're not afraid to go uh, visit mom and them. But when you come to the church, all of a sudden, you, you, got, to, you got to do your cautionary ministry. But the truth of the matter is, it's a hot map. Mm -hmm. It's a tactic the enemy is using mm -hmm. to pull us away from the church. Mm -hmm. Listen, your strength and your momentum is being among other believers. Mm -hmm. I love family reunion, but how many you know family reunion can be a distraction? Well, come to the church can be a distraction too if you come with the wrong motives. But at least come. You go to your job, it's a distraction, but you still go to work. Why you want to get paid? We don't know they have returned to work. You know, other y'all still enjoying that. It's a, a benefit. But however, most of us, we back into the saddle doing what we got to do. But in the meantime, understand that enemy has tactics to pull us away. Yes. But it's our responsibility to stay, or stay the course. So he has a short time. So anytime someone has a short time, they're dangerous. It's like a guy that's in prison, a male or female, and they got a death sentence. That means they can kill less about anything else. They'll do all they can to be destructive. They are, they'll take you out of the can. And we call that shank you. Wow, they got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. The devil feels like this, he has nothing to lose. So he's going to take every short moment he got of your valuable time that God's given you to live on this earth to take you out. Now, with my, with my dear sister, Dr. Howley, uh, became uh, dying with COVID-19. Now, uh, if the devil could have his way, he would kill her then. Mm -hmm. But God said, not so. Mm -hmm. well, somebody said, well, some folks have died of COVID. Well, that's true. But for her, her testimony that God brought out, yes. it, did it put in a position to pray more? Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure it did. Mm -hmm. Did it put in a position that she was afraid for a moment? I'm mm -hmm. quite sure she was. Mm -hmm. Why? Never say what you won't be when it can happen. Mm -hmm. So, but it was a tactic that could have literally annihilated her for her future of ministry. Mm -hmm. But God said, not so. See, the Bible says, when the enemy meant for evil, God turns for you good. Mm -hmm. See, what happened to Joseph was evil, but it worked for the good of Israel to have a place to go to when the famine happened. The problem is they stayed too long. Mm -hmm. See, some of us, we get distracted with a tactic and we stay in the situation longer than we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. God make a way of escape, but many times we don't take the way of escape because we, we get stuck. And as a believer, you and I cannot afford to be stuck. If I'm talking to somebody, somebody say, I'm, nah, I can't be stuck. Amen. So it's a short time. It's window in. It's, it's a time set. He don't have eternity to do what he wants to do. He has a short time. But somebody said, well, man of God, a short time being over 2,000 plus years. Mm -hmm. Short time being my mama done died. Well, a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. Mm -hmm. So your time doesn't equate to God's time. But God said it's a short time. Mm -hmm. So if the short time is more shorter now than the time we're living in, it is more of an importance of very, us to be very prudent on how we live our lives. Live a life circumspectly of the heart. Loving thy neighbor thyself. Doing the golden rule. Doing the other as you have done to you. In other words, in this tactic of the enemy, he wants to get us so off target mm -hmm. that we'll miss the mark. Mm -hmm. we, we'll get caught in our own live flesh I always said, loud flesh cannot hear that small, still voice of God. See, when you let the enemy rob you, as the Bible said, the enemy coming not but to, number one, kill, three, destroy. It's a tactic. And you live long as I have lived, then you know the Bible is clear, submit thyself unto, unto God, period, resist the devil and he shall flee. Mm -hmm. See, what has happened to a lot of believers is that we're not submitted to God. We're not submitted to God like we used to be. You know, go to church and mouth is not important to you anymore. Mm -hmm. Listen to gospel music is not important to you anymore. Mm -hmm. Being around other believers is not important 
to you anymore. So these are tactics the enemy used and by saying, well, you know, nobody's perfect. Well, we didn't say nobody was perfect, but the Bible said, be you perfect, he is perfect. Yes. He is perfect. Perfect means a righteous life. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna live a righteous life, I got I gotta intentionally live this life. I gotta intentionally know my outward living is a result of what's on the inside of me. Mm. So when the enemy comes in the flood, I raise up the standard. That's I will raise up the standard. So Amen. God will recover with you and I. That when it does come, I mean, he's going to come. That he has a short time. It's a tad. He said, I'm going to raise up a standard. But it can't be a standard in you if you don't have a word in you. Mm. Can I be a standard in you and I if we don't live this life? Can I be a standard for, to, to represent God when we're so easy to give in to under small pressure? See, pressure is when some compact something. Mm -hmm. We all have been under pressure. This this mm -hmm. virus has put all of us under pressure. But you know what? I still serve a God that can lift the pressure. Hallelujah. In other words, great is he that's in me, that he that's in the world. Other words, I'm not gonna let the devil tell me that I can't serve God in the midst of a, of a pandemic. Why? This ain't the first pandemic that we've been through. It just happened to be a pandemic we had. Mm -hmm. We got a pandemic of folks killing each other in the community. Yes. We got a pandemic of people are still trying to rob the bank. We got a pandemic of people trying to survive. <clears throat> so the pandemic is here. But don't let the pandemic become the tactic that the devil used as an opportunity to keep you from being what you're supposed to be. Oh, you're learning something. Now, listen, let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 to verse 9. That's my last chapter. Then we're going to give you a slide. And in the Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 to 9, this is amplified verse. Now, I, I believe when you teach the word of God, have backing on the scripture. In other words, there's a King James Version, International Version, uh, Amplified Version. And every now and then, I like to use the Amplified Version. It kind of breaks it down for mm -hmm. a beginner. And I can find, you ain't got to be a beginner in Christ. You can be uh, a veteran. Just these, some of these translations can make it much easier to understand. Because sometimes yeah. we thought we understood until you read a new translation. It doesn't take away from where it is. It's the same word. It's just been translated differently. Um, but in the book of Galilee, chapter uh, 5, verse 7 to verse 9, Amplified Version, it says, He said, You were running the race well. Mm. Who has interfered yeah. and prevented you yeah. from obeying the truth? It's yeah. a question that Paul presented. Mm -hmm. He said, you were running. Word means passion. Mm -hmm. Some of you and I uh, have been have ran this race a long time. Mm -hmm. But somehow, somewhere, we allow ourselves to be interfered and prevented. But he asked, well, who has? Okay, let's identify who that person is mm -hmm. that you have allowed to use a tactic to interfere with your relationship with God. What circumstance in this world have you allowed to interfere with your commitment to the things of God? Yes. See, it's, it's on us. What we allow is it's what we permit. See, I choose to live right. Mm -hmm. I choose to be an honorable man of God. Mm -hmm. I choose to, to love my family. I choose to be respectful and honorable to my wife. I choose to why. I won't let somebody else interfere with what God gives me. Why? I made it my mind. I made a, a conscious decision. I intentionally every day I'm gonna respect my family, I'm gonna respect myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give excuse of the enemy interfering in my life because he cannot come in unless I allow him. He says, You are running the race well. Who has interfered and prevented you from obeying the truth? What 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 psychic got you? Mm. No, what 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 Jack Daniel? No, got you in a stupor. You know, uh, what what vapor machine you using that keep you from doing the right things of God? See, we, we can use excuses, but the truth of the matter is the tactic of the enemy. Mm -hmm. The enemy is using these tactics to get you and I off target. Mm -hmm. and, and because he, he does such a, a, a deadly job at it, we fall prey to it. Mm -hmm. you, you ever, it's like people every year in December, the 29th, the 30th, 30, 30, how many days in December? It's 31? Mm -hmm. 31 days in December? You know, the church we had this New Year's Eve service, you know, that, that came from the proclamations, you know, when the slave was free, we just never stopped having to serve. Mm -hmm. It went from just celebrating being free to now we're just doing it to get us on for the new year. Oh, that's different stuff. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. so the devil, so we have these services saying, I'm going to New Year with a New Year resolution. I'm not going to do this no more. I'm not going to have this no more. I'm not going to sleep around no more, blah, 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 whatever it may be. But that same tactic that you in, in last year, if you don't uproot it, in your heart, you're going to do it the next year. Mm -hmm. Amen. In my tradition, my family, this is crazy, guys. This is funny. My mother used to always say, God, take the Christmas tree down before the New Year come in. Bring, going to bring bad luck. Mm -hmm. So I start carrying out the same crazy tradition in my family. One day, the Holy Spirit woke me and said, now, why you keep taking that tree down 
trying to beat the new year. Uh -huh. He said, don't you realize that same tree you took down last year, the same tree you put on last year? Mm -hmm. So it's still the same tree. Mm -hmm. So here we get caught up with a tactic, think if I put the tree up before the new year, I'm gonna have good, I'm gonna have good fortune. Uh, I'm gonna let some 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 jackass walk in my house, a man, to be the first one to come to the door, and we're we gonna have money. Right. A black eyed pea. Listen, these things are tax on the enemy. Yes. If you're broke in 2021, you're gonna be broke in 22. Right. The, the goal is the Lord, give me a a, a renewal, a renewal how to overcome the enemy. One is pay your tithe. Second mm -hmm. is to be faithful and handle your finances. It's a whole subject matter. Let me stop here. But anyway, he said he was really well. And he gave you yes. a reason. Give me a reason yes. why you've been here. Yes. He says, he said, this deceptive persuasion mean to sway someone is not from him who called you. Not a calling me, you being a preacher. Him who called you mean the way of salvation. To freedom in Christ. And verse 9 said, a little leaven, mm -hmm. a little leaven, a slight inclination to error, or a few false teachers, we know we got them going on, leavens to hold back, it perverts the church, the concept of faith and mislead the church. Amen. That's what I'm about to say in the latter day, that false prophet shall come. Mm -hmm. He said he will come. Mm -hmm. And that, that means they, they represent the church. They, they are a counterfeiter of the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. But if your gift of discernment is operable, which is in the Holy Spirit, then you will be overcome, able to overcome that because greater is he than you than he does the world. So we must remember that the enemy to take a full hold of our life with the tactics that he uses. Remember, a tactic is something that's been used to lure someone away mm -hmm. from what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I, I remember as a kid, now, I wasn't a bad kid. I just had a lot of sugar in my system. But uh, we used to play this game called hide and go seek. I just love playing hide and go seek with the girls. They know you hide and go seek, get to go find them. That, that was a the goal. They thought, we, you know, we were just playing. We, we were looking to find something. And, uh, but it nevertheless, it was a tactic that we used as guys to play to catch the girls. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and they fall for it. You know, I mean, it, it just was a tactic. So if the enemy can use a kid to come with a tactic to get a girl, how much would he use tactic to get us as a dog? Mm -hmm. See, the thing about us now is that we learn to do better. Mm -hmm. And when you learn to do better, you do better. So he says here clearly, he says, false teachers. False teachers mean those that deliver a message that does not relate to God. Or it could be a counterfeit. See, it's like this. You can't prevent a false teacher from teaching. You can only prevent from getting to you. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you got to be careful who table you eat at. See, some of us love running to conference after conference after conference. It used to be revival, and then we call it conference. Now we call it the gathering now. It's still the same Amen. stuff. We just use different tactics trying to get folks to the building. Amen. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, if the message is not from God, it's a, it's a defeated foe. Mm -hmm. If you watch Facebook, everybody got a sermon. Mm -hmm. uh, the COVID-19 produced a whole lot of Facebook want to tell you how you feel preachers. Yes. Maybe they want to tell y'all. Yes. But they want to call. And then you got people jumping on the bandwagon, mm -hmm. amen them mm -hmm. with the likes and mm -hmm. the ups and downs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then all you're doing is empower the enemy to use more taxes to derail people in the church. Amen. You know, folks get mad at, at the church for something they, that wasn't true, but then they I mean, stay true to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had people about, well, my season up. But that's a tactic of the enemy. No one else say they season up to their job, but only season up when they go to the church. Amen. Related to the preacher. Right, right. That CEO of that company ain't paying you what's supposed to be paying you, but you don't say my season's up. You keep going. Amen. I'm going to prove that devil wrong. I'm going to work on it anyway. See, if you can have that mindset, can you not have that same mindset for the things of God? How the church it? must hold its position, its posture in these tactics times of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Listen, he come again, John 10, 10, the enemy coming not, but to still kill and to destroy. Let me tell you something. Don't let him do it to you. Don't let the devil take your family. Don't let the devil take you away from your, your set man, set woman of God. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil use tactics to, 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 to uh, discredit your, your leaders. Mm -hmm. Listen, these are the same people that one time you adored them. Yes. These are the same people that what God used to bring you out of out of prison. When I say prison, I mean locked down in sin. These are the same people yes. that sometimes actually were fools. Yes. yes. Paid your bills, helped you get through the over the huddle. New Year's commit ungodly behavior, still embrace you. Mm -hmm. And now the devil can use a tactic. If they do one thing yep. that doesn't go along, doesn't align with the things of God, all of a sudden throw them out with the bath water. Yes. The baby with the bath water. Listen, get rid of the bath water, but hold on to the baby. 
Hold on to your leader. Support your leader. Encourage your leader. Because mm -hmm. there's a tactic that the enemy is trying to discredit. Preach us. Amen. And there are some preachers that are doing something. They got a little bit of how I many there are so many preachers that are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. Now, so we covered this, how the devil has used uh his tactic when he fell to the earth. And then in, in Galatians, Paul is telling us, you know, you did win well, but you know, who hindered you? Mm -hmm. Because people got a lot of lavish excuses why they're not living right no more. Mm -hmm. Well, I got hurt. The church hurt me. Who hurt you? They hurt me. Hurt who? Hurt me. Hurt who? Hurt them. They hurt me. No name to it. Just to be hurt. Same hurt to get on the job. Still go to work. Get hurt by your boyfriend. Amen. You still, still with that jackass. ass. Amen. Get hurt by your girlfriend. You still hang with that, that you, you know. You yeah. Know, you know. In the end of the day, you have to understand the enemy using tactics like that to hold back. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all know, yeah, y'all know I'm a preacher. I tell you like this. I preach hard now. Yeah. Because I want you to get this. Because if you don't change your mindset, you'll stay stuck mm -hmm. with the enemy's tactics. Amen. If he, if he trick you last year mm -hmm. in the same position mm -hmm. and trick you again this year in the same position, that means something is, is not quite click kicking in with you, mm -hmm. a clicking. That's why you have to get back to the Bible. You get back to reading your scripture. Get back to the, again with pastoral care to get you through this hard time. Now, so that, that concludes that chapter. Let me give you seven tactics that Satan uses to sidetrack believers. Number one, he used political views of the world. He uses political views of the world. Remember, the Bible said we're in this world, but not of this world. Right. I, my, my, the old saying said we're just pilgrim passing through. Mm -hmm. That's what we could classify. But he used political views of the world, such as being vaccinated or not being vaccinated, mask or no mask, mm -hmm. six feet or no six feet. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's the enemy. It's a tactic. We six feet in the church, mask in the church, but you go to the job, you ain't six feet for nobody. Some of y'all, y'all, some of y'all return back to the theater. No mask. Mm -hmm. then if you wear your mask right here, that you're not wearing the mask. Mm -hmm. You know, the mask will be oh, you know, you know, some of y'all wearing it right here. You know, you don't realize you're breathing in, but that, that's a whole different tactic story there. But he has used political views to sidetrack church, the believers. You got the, the, the most segregated service is on Sunday. Amen. You can tell when you see political views by the way people carry themselves, mm -hmm. how they act. Mm -hmm. And we supposed to be believers. Mm -hmm. You you mad at me because I'm vaccinated. I'm mad at you because you won't get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. You offended with me because I wear my mask. I'm offended with you because you won't put on the mask. Mm -hmm. It's a tactic. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to wear the mask, don't wear the mask. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be vaccinated, don't get vaccinated. But don't let that separate you from the love of God. Amen. Don't let that be the tactic the devil used to keep us from being believers. Amen. Otherwise, I have my brother's keeper. If I'm missing that because I got vaccinated, well, pray for me. If you mean that you didn't get vaccinated and you get COVID, hey, bro, you pray for you because, you know, it, the opportunity came. But what I'm saying is we have to make decisions beyond the devil's tactics of tricking us. Mm -hmm. Number two, he has used the COVID-19 of being offended so you won't attend church. Right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, 25, Amplified Burns said this. And it says, and let us consider it thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 25 said, not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction, as is the habit of some, for encouraging one another and is and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ return approaching. Mm -hmm. The other translation uh, says even day approaching, but it means Christ return. Amen. So the devil says, listen, now the COVID-19 is your reason not to go to church no more. Well, we did do what the government submitted to the to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. We closed the church door down for the sake of the people help because we didn't know what this thing was doing. Mm -hmm. Now that people vaccinated, people got some precautions in place. Now we can return back to the church. Amen. But some some jacked up preacher said one publicly, I guess became somebody from a national ministry saying, hey, I believe it. Well, some folks never gonna return back to church. No, they did not return to church because they didn't want to go to church. They wanted Amen. to church when they were down. Amen. They didn't need an excuse. Amen. But the truth of the matter be told is, it's a tactic the devil using. COVID-19, I can't go to church. But again, we go back, we go back to our job. We go back to our mother, mother in love. I, I, I thought they called mother in love. They called mother in love. Now, what is it, man? They know you call it. We go back, hang out with family and friends who you know don't care about you. Mm -hmm. But you can't come to church. Amen. I go to church because I, I ain't going to church. I'm offended. I'm offended. Wait, wait. Uh, uh, that, that, that they, they take up the offering. Yeah. But but you were offended when they were giving out the stimulus check. Mm -mm. 
See, we get offended by what we want to be offended. I'm talking about believers now. Amen. But here, we can't come to the church because someone offended. But the Bible says, if your brother offend you, go to him. Amen. It is not go to Susan and tell Susan about macaroni. It's to go to Susan yourself and try to resolve the matter. Mm -hmm. If Susan don't want to listen to you, then you go take uh, 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 macaroni uh, noodles with the macaroni and then try to talk to Susan. And Susan don't want to then bring them before the church. Amen. But what we do, when we get offended, we go run away from the church. Mm -hmm. We left. Why you leave the church? Well, everybody hypocrite. Well, probably the hypocrite wow. was you. Yes. But you won't call everybody hypocrite. Yes. But the truth of the matter, as believers, we should stay together. Mm. Isn't it amazing? Hastings can stay together. How the uh, the uh, the uh, the social socialization can stay together. Mm -hmm. Polish work together. The farmer work together. But for some reason, the church folk we can't work together. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we leave our organization, but they don't leave the organization. Mm. Some folks die being where they were. Mm -hmm. But in the church, I, I got to go my season up. I, I, I can't grow no more. Well, you're not growing because you ain't eating. Amen. A closed mouth can't be fed. Hallelujah. So if you use that as, let, let, use that as a tactic, you ain't growing no more, but you're going to go on the other side to grow, and you still ain't growing. You didn't grow it out, you ain't going to grow it out. Because mm -hmm. growth is based on the individual making a decision. I'm going to eat. I'm going to develop myself. How we eat and develop? We get into the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Question, when the last time you spent time and study the quality of God's word. Because most of us sit around, listen to Facebook folks posting their views and their, their opinion, but we don't go to the scripture. So we get offended, we leave the church. We don't return to church because we're offended. COVID-19, I can't come. But they got vaccination in place. They got boosters in place. You don't come to church. You, church. you don't want to come to church. Mm -hmm. That's the tactic they was using. Now, I mean, I like that. That's fine. I love you still anyway. Number three, distracting us from righteous living. So now you got a situation where people are being distracted from one live right. Mm -hmm. We use the grace method. But we're under grace. We are under grace. But Paul said, because grace abounds, you're not pertaining to sin. Amen. Yeah, with God forbid. That means you have no justified reason not to live a righteous life. Mm -hmm. Nobody's perfect. Well, that's true. Nobody's perfect, but we serve a perfect God. Though. Amen. We create an image of God. That means we strive to be perfect. We can be perfect in Him, mean righteous in Him. Amen. No. No one does it right every time, mm -hmm. but a righteous God requires a righteous people. Mm -hmm. He said, "Be you holy, for I am holy." So that Amen. that knowledge, not not living a righteous life, holy don't mean holiness as no no makeup, no no uh, no jury. Some of y'all need some of y'all need to fix it up. You get a man, you fix it up. If you don't put a makeup on, but just keep it on when you go to sleep, so he won't wake up to a nightmare the next day. But nevertheless, at the end of the day. Don't let that be your reason Amen. of not living a righteous life. Amen. Because it's not about a, 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 a look. It's a heart matter. So you can look righteous and not be righteous. Amen. Because they call self righteous. Well, you got some folks think because they can impress people by the way they talk ethically and they can they use say whatever Paul said. I didn't come with a swelling word. I came with words you can understand. Amen. But if, 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 I'd rather be on a leader who can speak my language, who can speak what I can understand. In other words, someone trying to speak big words and you you go along, hey man, you don't know what the word means. Mm -hmm. God help us, Jesus. Amen. So he, he wants to describe it from living a right life. So in Dr. Alice, she's she's living a righteous life because she's living right. You mad because she's living a righteous life, mm -hmm. and now you you want to be offended with her. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and for some reason, we always want to find a fix with other believers, mm -hmm. but we're never offended with the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you, you get a uh, righteous person saying something publicly, it ain't right, but for some reason that don't bother you. Mm -hmm. But when a righteous person says something that is right, mm -hmm. and you supposed to be a righteous person, when they say, now you you talking about that they, they, they too hard. Yes. You know, they don't give people yes. a chance. They, they judging me. Yes. Now, the judge is that you judge yourself first. Mm -hmm. The devil used that as a tactic so you won't hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Because you think somebody trying to put you down. You're put down as hoping to get you the brain come back up. Amen. Number four, almost done. Hindering or delaying progress. Such as Nehemiah. Nehemiah was call of God to rebuild the wall Amen. of Jerusalem. Here, Sam Bella and his, uh, Tabar, the jack butts, decided they're going to be offended because Nehemiah heard the voice of God. Mm -hmm. They didn't hear the voice of God, so they're going to try to hear the word and put out a false information that Nehemiah was trying to be uh, a king. He's trying to be uh, a, a God over there. Yeah. And all he was doing was doing what God called him to do. Isn't that my car to do that other the leader? Yes. Yeah. They have the audacity, yes. the fight. Mm -hmm. That's ludicrous. Yes. That is nonsense. But it's happening. Amen. The Bible said, in the latter days, some men shall depart from the faith. Amen. So what you're seeing in today's time, 
circumstances they've used is getting believers going against other believers. Amen. The house divided against itself cannot stand. Mm. We cannot stand together. We divide it. Amen. Now, man, Delta, we have moments that we don't agree, but we, we learn to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got different views, but we still serve the same God. Amen. So because she may not see it the way I see it, though I'm right most of the time, <laughs> don't mean that, you know, every now and then she's not right either. That's just a joke, devil. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, don't let true relationship be divided, divided by the mm. devil's tactic because you don't agree on something. Never. Still be saved. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Number five, swing a believer into solitude and travel into depression. Swing a believer into solitude into depression. And See, the devil used the tactic of solitude, being by yourself, windows uh, shade down, room dark, to get a thought in your mind to commit suicide, mm -hmm. to make you think nobody care about you. Amen. Make you think nobody loves you. Listen, you're a believer. Now, even believers are attacking, uh, being attacked in this area sometimes. Amen. You know, depression is real. It is real. Mental illness is real. real. Mental health is a, it's a challenge. Mental health means to help get that mental mindset challenged to, mm. to be more healthy. Mm -hmm. Mental illness is where people are going through things that have, have, have literally has been a, a trauma to them. Mm -hmm. Instead of letting a person go into solitude, we know they're going to solitude. We, we need to go get that person. Mm -hmm. We need to reach out to that person. Mm -hmm. See, when, you, when you're in a depression state, Sometimes you don't know you're depressed. Amen. All you know is, man, I'm just, I'm just withdrawn from people. You know, I just feel my life is just falling apart. Instead of you the discernment to recognize that, we're trying to get discernment to my, they really don't want out. Listen, you, you, you've been so far to the left mm -hmm. because the truth of the matter, people are hurting. Amen. People are going through. I'm not talking about the world. They got their own. I'm talking about church folks, Amen. believers. Amen. A battling depression. They're battling mental illness. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, there are more... Christian taking medicine that you know mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By his fact, we're here, yeah, but still, some people, we're still taking medication. Amen. I woke up this morning, I looked at my, in my mirror, and I, I saw three prescriptions. <laughs> One, all three for blood pressure, mm -hmm. to maintain my blood pressure. Amen. Why? A lot of things have happened in my life that's caused stress. Mm -hmm. Some of you read a chair, but some of it's been because of stress, the pressure of life. Amen. But I've learned to let God be my prescription. Mm. I take that and I give God praise Amen. for being the Lord of my life. Amen. Why? I won't let the devil use tactics to keep me from serving God. Amen. Amen. Number six, he wants to silence our kingdom voice about public exposure. Mm. Yeah. If the devil can use any tactic, all the one I'm talking about, he won't use tactics about someone of authority have erred in the faith. Mm -hmm. Now, what's his name? Don McCurkley sung that song, We Fall Down. But we get back up. I think fall down and get back up. That's how you know I'm not a singer. I don't know all the words to me. You know, you know what I'm talking about. But believe fall down and get back up. The Bible says adjustment, fall down seven Sometimes. times and get back up. Adjustment. Amen. Adjustment. Amen. He said, all right. He said, adjustment. Amen. Fall down seven. Now don't y'all take that scripture. Well, I got seven times to fall, because the Bible says so. No, you've been a jackrabbit. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is if you do fall of a righteous person, you're going to get back up. Amen. It's your spiritual nature to get back up. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy is going to cause us, he's going to send tactics to, to sidetrack us. Mm -hmm. He'll use your family, friends, folk to sidetrack you. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth of the matter is let God be God and defeat the devil through you. Right. Because you have the power of thought in you. But when the enemy comes, he wants to use these things that happen in the church to silence the preacher. Amen. To silence the not just the preacher, the believer. Amen. You take a, a person that was living a had been living a righteous life and say they they they, they meet someone, they meet a, a very significant other, and they fall in love and, and uh things happen. You know, when you fall in love, things can happen. Amen. You know, somebody gotta say, you know, we got somebody gotta stay, don't be spending out about how don't, don't be talking you doing Bible and kissing and saying you can't do that. That that'll, that'll make you fall. But if, if you have a Bible study, have a Bible study in the public where somebody can see. You. Amen. But nevertheless, uh Say something happened in that person's life, and they missed the mark. Well, they missed the mark indeed. But this miss the mark worth destroying their reputation. No. The world would do PR, the public relations. They do everything they can to cover the error of a celebrity. Amen. You hear, but it'll, it'll get quiet quickly. Yes, sir. A believer do something. Oh, it's national news. It's global. Amen. This person, we ain't never heard of this person. Mm -hmm. All say global what they did. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not justifying sin. I'm saying that we gotta learn to love our own. Amen. We gotta learn to cover each other. Thank you. 
We gotta learn to protect one another. Thank if you see me in error, don't 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 go to the social media. Come talk to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you got a problem with me, don't go to uh, Instagram. Come talk to to, to to Graham. Talk to me. Amen. I'm the one that's gonna issue with. Don't don't put it on Facebook because you never know. You may be spreading something that's not true. Amen. Yes. You don't know why I was doing what I did. You don't know why I, I took that by that person's house. You don't know. All you know, oh, he's in the neighborhood. Well, what's wrong in the neighborhood? I just dropped something off, if that be the case. But because the devil wanted to use a tactic to, mm -hmm. to defame my name mm -hmm. and use you as a as a support group, now it's spread a rumor that's not true. Mm -hmm. So if the rumor is true, you're still required to pray for me. Amen. You're still required to, 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 to push me to a better place. Don't let me stay in the hole. Help pull me out. Mm -hmm. Again, God said, if a brother be overtaking a fault, you did a spiritual what? Restore such a one. Yes. Bring them back. Amen. Don't don't let don't let your comrade die. When a soldier go to war and a soldier get killed, they pick that body, they bring it back. Amen. They don't leave it down to, to decay. They bring them back. Amen. Why can't the church bring each other back? Why can't we pick one another? Why can't we pastor? Encourage each other when things have been done, mm -hmm. or we may have done something we had a bit of. Why can't we stand and say, Man of God, woman of God, keep on moving Amen. on? Amen. We are here to stay together. A house of values that cannot stand. Amen. The tattoo of the devil is the sounds of our voice. He sounds my voice. He sounds Dr. Allen's voice. He, he sounds any other pastor that's sitting there for it to keep us from speaking the things of yes. God. And the devil is a lie that would not happen under my watch. Why? I believe in God's name. Thank you, Jesus. Last but not least, number seven. He, he wants to destroy that family by ongoing settlement of dysfunctional behavior. Mm -hmm. This functional behavior in the family, the body of Christ, the natural family, all the dysfunction every family has. Amen. He wants to use the ongoing tactic to keep a generation of going on, mm -hmm. but we got a responsibility, men and women, got to shut it down. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you seven tactics. That's more than this. I just gave you seven that God gave, Holy Spirit gave me. You get your own, your own experience with the devil has tried to do to you and your family. I want to say to every believer, listen, don't let the devil taxes be the reason of you not spending eternity with God. Mm -hmm. Listen, people are dying every day. Mm -hmm. Not just from COVID. People are dying every day. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how many people have died without God? Amen. How many people who were in the church are no longer in the church because of a tactic the devil has used? Mm -hmm. The enemy coming not but to steal, kill, yeah. And, and to destroy. Yeah. Will you be one subject to his his tactics? Will you see a comrade in the faith and not go to their rescue? Will you allow a Sabbath day service versus a Sunday morning service divide you as a believer? Mm -hmm. The Bible said the day, the day is the Lord's, every day is the Lord's day. He didn't say just worship me on Saturdays. He said worship me seven days a week. He's not the God on the, just the God of the Sabbath only. He's the God of every day. Mm -hmm. But when we knew the enemy used a tactic, he'll use the church against each other. Each other. Y'all go, go to church on Saturday, so y'all ain't saved. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I closed, I was at the gym, I was in the song, I'm out of business. And when I go to the song, I haven't been while since COVID. I probably been one time soon, but never let it. But meantime, I was in the gym, I was in the sauna, you know, sweating myself out, go in, dick, come out, skin's a prune. I was sweating everything out. I'm sitting in the, in the sauna, and then this guy comes in. He's a seven day business brother. I know I said he's a brother, he's still in the faith. He comes in, he starts asking me these mysterious questions. I said, man, get to the point. What, 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 you, what are you trying to ask me? He said, well, you know, do you go to church on Saturday? I said, I go to church as often as I can. He said, what do you mean by that? I said, if they have church on Saturday, I go. If they go on Sunday, I go on Sunday. If they have no money, I go on Monday. He said, well, no, no. The Bible said that the, the Sabbath day is the holy, the holy day. I said, that's true, but have you read the scripture that said every day is holy? Mm. <laughs> have you read the scripture that said every, every, day, that every day is the Lord's day? Mm -hmm. He's, he's trying to make an exception to the rule because he wants to do. He wants to prove a point. He wants to prove me wrong as another believer because I didn't go to church on a Sabbath day, Sabbath every Saturday. So I asked a question. I said, "Well, if you go to church on Saturday, and that's the only day you go, what do you do the rest of the week? If you only write on Saturdays, what are you doing the rest of the week?" Yes. See, that shut that down. So oh, I didn't expose him to foolishness. I said, I want to give you something to think about. Sometimes we got to leave people in a better way, Amen. give them a better quality. Amen. Mm -hmm. Instead of being on defense, attacking for back, give them wisdom. So maybe you need to do that today. Maybe you need to go back and revisit some mm -hmm. things you've done for people. Maybe some of you all have, have allowed yourself to speak negative of your woman of God. But today, I want to encourage you mm -hmm. to make a change. Mm -hmm. As we close out this, I want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to reach out to your woman of God. Uh, Dr. Allen, if you give your church phone number, so somebody need to call. 
uh, for prayer, uh, encouragement. Uh, can you give that phone number right now? Yes, they can call 706-464-1023. That again is 706-464-1023. She's a, she's a professional counselor. Not only that, she's a pastor, has a heart for people. Whether you're a part of the uh, Bundle Life Ministry or you just a, a follower by Facebook, God bless you, or Instagram, call this woman God because she can give you what you need. Father, I pray for this listening audience. I pray for the mm -hmm. Bundle Life Family Church. Mm -hmm. I pray for the woman God that she's going through a time of refreshing, a beautiful sister Janice as they enjoyed each other, time together, walking on each. Mm -hmm. I pray that you keep them covered. But most of all, I pray for this person that is going through a situation in life right now mm -hmm. where the enemy is using such a tactic to destroy their faith. I pray that mm -hmm. you stay the cold. I pray that you return back to the place where God has called you. Father, there's one that this may not be saved, need to give you life. I pray they pray this prayer. Father, come into my life. Mm -hmm. Forgive me, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, or just agree with this prayer. Reach out to Dr. Outlet, the Abundant Life Ministry. They're going to give you some pastoral care. They'll give you some resources to help you in your faith walk. Listen, you can be part of the church. If you're not coming live, you still can be part of the church by way of virtue. You can be a virtual member. You know, just make sure you do your financial support virtually by giving it. Support the work. Until then, may God bless you. Have a blessed day. We're about to go to our second service, our first service here, but our second service from Dr. Allen. Woman of God, thank you for this opportunity. I pray I said something to encourage the people and may they walk in this faith. Until then, may God bless you. We love you. Have a blessed and blessed day. Thank you. Praise the Lord for this awesome man of God, uh, Prophet Powell at World Changes Tabernacle. Let me tell you, that word today should have encouraged you to be the better. There was something said to help me, and we pray something was said to help you. On next Sunday, we'll be in person on our campus, Abundant Life Campus. We'll be in person. We'll be in person next Sunday at the 10 a.m. hour. Until then, God bless you. There will be Bible study this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And we also will be doing our 7 a.m., yes, 7 a.m. morning prayer at, uh, uh, on our line. Again, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Powell. I want y'all to do something for me. If this service has been blessed you and encouraged you and kind of convicted you in some way, whatever, just send some hearts up right now, some lights that this service virtual has been a blessing to you as it has been a blessing to myself as I continue on our vacation. I want you to know I love you. Be blessed. Go ahead and send some hearts up. Send some likes if you were blessed by the word of God today. I know I was. What a day. What a time and what a word. Whatever you do, speak with God and don't let the enemy cause you to get out of your place with the Lord. Until next Sunday, we will be Facebook Live as well as in person. In person service and communion will be next Sunday at the 10 a.m. hour. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and do something fun. Until next time we're together, may God keep you. May God let his face shine upon you and be gracious until we meet again in the name of jesus amen